1966, um, there was a an assembly race in Watts. I managed the campaign of a guy by the name of Gerald Stevens. Gerald Stevens is somebody I knew. He was a courtroom clerk. He had his master's degree. He'd grown up in Watts. Big Daddy Unruh uh, sent his own candidate, who I think was about 27, 28 years old, who, by the way, ended up being a good guy, Leon Ralph, but nobody knew him. Um, and what happened was, after uh, they just overwhelmed us with money, buying billboards, sent out letters, uh, Christmas cards in 1968 to everybody in the thing saying, oh, I'm Leon Ralph, and I'm going to be running for assembly. You know, we weren't even prepared, and we didn't have any money. Um, anyway, to make a long story short, uh, talked about becoming Republicans because we were so angry at the Democratic Party because we felt that Big Daddy Unruh had come here and he was going to run the black community by uh, getting this uh, his assemblyman elected. Approached Celeste King, who at that time uh, owned King Bail Bonds, and also he was Mr. Black Republican in Los Angeles. Approached him about the idea that we would become black Republicans, and the only thing we wanted to do was control our uh, own politics and our own community. He went to Holmes Tuttle, which uh, Holmes Tuttle was one of the people behind Ronald Reagan, and he went to some other folks about us becoming part of the Republican Party. And they said, basically, they didn't want the militants and they didn't want us to be Republicans. So then Babu and I, uh, uh, Ayuka Babu, the founder of the Pan-African Film Festival, he and I uh, sat down and we, we must have talked eight hours about maybe we ought to start our own just black political party. And that's what we started. We started the Black Panther. I had, by the way, prior to that time, I had been down in Alabama and I had worked with the Lowndes County Free Organization, which later uh, became the Black Panther. Everybody started calling it the Black Panther Party. That's really the original Black Panther Party is the Lowndes County, Louisiana uh, uh, um, Party. Anyway, so we decided that we were going to start our own political party. Um, that we were going to register people. Um, at some point, we talked about having a credit union, opening up a credit union. Uh, we're just trying to organize the black community. What year is this? 66. Okay. We didn't know at the time, nor had we ever heard of Huey Newton, Bobby Seale, or the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. In Los Angeles, there was another organization that, frankly, mirrored what Huey Newton and Bobby Seale were doing, called the Community Alert Patrol, which was headed up by Brother Crook. Um, so we out. already knew that there was somebody doing, in a sense, that area. And that's important because you have to understand Black Los Angeles. Again, I grew up here. And I have remarked to myself that as many car break-ins, house break-ins, assaults, particularly men against women, I never, the whole time I grew up in Los Angeles, ever remember anyone ever calling the LA Police Department because we considered LAPD to be the enemy. They, when they were, we thought they were nothing but trouble. They weren't there to help us. And I think I mentioned uh, uh, earlier at, when I was interviewed before by you that uh, I must have been 20 years old before I saw to protect and serve and wondering in my own mind, oh, is that what police are supposed to do? Because we just saw them as an occupying army. Anyway, I, I, so we start the Black Panther political party. And basically all we have is a central committee. And central committee probably comprised no more than um, maybe 12 to 15 people. What, do you know what? Month you started the party? No, I don't. I can't. I can't tell you the month. I can just tell you that the election was in '66. Uh, after the election, I was so pissed off at that. How could this Texas cracker come here and run the black community? I was just livid. Who about, are you referring to? Um, uh, Jesse Unruh, Unruh, Big Daddy, Fat Texas Cracker. Okay, Unruh. Okay, him. Okay. Uh, so anyway. Um, so who's on the central committee of the 
Black Panther. Promotion. Well, Babu was on there. Uh, Angela Davis at not in the beginning because she wasn't even in um, Los Angeles. I don't think at the time. Um, and some other folks. Uh, the brother who coined the phrase uh, "Black is Beautiful," Frank Hardy. He was there. Renee and um, Bobby Hodges, both of whom I had known. They also worked in the South. Uh, did uh, civil. They also went down south and did civil civil rights work. I mean, people don't understand this. So, uh, so we sat around talking about what could we do, what can we organize. From the Central Committee, we decided that, and part of this also had to do with the Black Congress. Um, I'm not just talking to Babu. I'm also talking to Rob Karanga. I'm talking to Walter Bremond. We st we start to talk about starting the Black Congress because all of this is kind of going on at the same time. What happened was in 1965 when they had the, what was called the Watts Riot, I had no idea that there was as much animus in Los Angeles as because all the focus had been on the South. And that's why I'm traveling 3,000 miles to do civil rights work in the South. And it occurred to me when I came back after 65, why in the hell am I going 3,000 miles? There's a lot of work to be done there. And that's when we started trying to organize the black community. And and Walter Bremont, who was with, I think it was called Social Action Center or something, I can't remember the name of it. He had this uh, organization that he didn't know Los Angeles. I knew Los Angeles, okay? And Ron Karanga didn't know Los Angeles because he was from Maryland, I think. Uh, so I'm the one who who knows Los Angeles and I, <laughs> I know where all the, the bodies were buried. We... Uh, we, our lawyer was Frank Evans. Uh, Frank Evans, um, we asked him, how do we become a political party? He said, well, you need to have a corporation. You need to have a nonprofit corporation, which we eventually we uh, filed some papers in Sacramento uh, to start this. And we also needed it because we, we wanted to do a credit union. You know, we were, I mean, we tried to, we tried to build up the black community. There was not really any trouble between the folks in Oakland and Los Angeles until, uh, oh, Harry Truly was another brother that was in there. I, I can't remember all the names and some I probably, they probably don't want me to mention anyone. But um, I, um, Huey and I had, we talked, we had each other's phone number. We had a, a spoken agreement between the two of us that if, because they, folks were trying to play us against each other. Um, but then when Huey went to jail and they started the Free Huey movement, Eldridge Cleaver took over the Black Panther Party, even though it should have been Bobby Seale. Mm -hmm. It was, so then the next thing is, there's going to be conflict between, they want to move into Los Angeles. Eldridge Cleaver said that uh, we either had to join them, which we had no intentions of doing, um, or we had to change our name to the Pink Pussycat something or something. You see something insulting. Um, rap found out about it. Rap was, I guess, in New York or Atlanta. I'm not sure what rap was. Rap sent, um, rap was chairman of, of uh, SNCC at the time. And we were, you know, I had known rap from before and I had known Stokely from before. He didn't want niggas fighting. So he sent a man by the name of Irving Davis uh, and James Foreman out to Los Angeles. At that time, um, I was uh, dating uh, 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 Angela Davis, and she and I were actually living together at the time. And Jim Foreman and um, Irving Davis came to our apartment trying to, um, they wanted to squash it. And they got on a plane and flew to, uh, um, flew to um, Oakland, talked to, I guess, Bobby Seal and Eldridge and so forth. And that, that's how we became SNCC. They wanted us, and we agreed that we become a SNCC chapter in California.